morning. Amen. Uh, every word of worship ought to be centered on and heading toward our blessed Lord Jesus. Uh, aren't you thankful uh, for what he did for us on Calvary some 2,000 years ago? Uh, uh, he bled, uh, he died, uh, but he didn't stay dead. Uh, he arose uh, victorious. joy it is to be in the house of the Lord today. I thank you so much for coming out to be with us. Uh, we're looking forward to what the Lord's going to do uh, here in this place and in this hour. Uh, it is a joy to have you uh, to be part of the service with us. I want you to uh, do something for me. Just stand up right there where you're at. Uh, give me two minutes back there. Uh, go around and greet somebody. Tell them you're glad to see them in the house of the Lord. Everyone says, it's good to be in the house of God. If you've come broken this morning, you've come to the right place. If, become, if you're lost and you don't know Christ as your Savior, boy, I tell you, it's a joy to have you here today. And uh, you've come to the right place. And this morning... The Bible teaches us that the angels don't know what we've been through. They were created just to worship. And so the Bible even tells us that we'll have a song that the angels can't sing. So you know what I'm going to do? Before I get there, I'm going to be in practice to raise a hallelujah.
said this before and I'll say it again if I have to have church all by myself by the way it is a personal relationship with God sometimes you just have to come to church and worship him on credit because nothing's going right you don't feel like worshiping you don't feel like crying you don't feel like doing anything you just know when you come to church but I'm glad that God is a God that takes you just exactly the way you are he will give you something if you'll just reach out to him this morning. Can we stand all over the house? Because he's a good, good father. That's, that's just the way he is. Just the way God is this morning. So he'll touch you if you'll let him. If you'll do your part, if you'll just bring your old flesh under subjection and raise your hand and say glory to God. If you don't come through the day, I know he's going to come through. Faith and actions. Hmm. 
heard a thousand stories of war. Thank you. 
know it's perfectly all right to worship him when things are up and when things are down. In fact, I found in my life that if I want to get out of a valley, one of the best things I can do is worship him while I'm in the valley. Uh, the old song said it like this, he's the God on the mountain is the God in the valley. He's a God that's worthy of our praise if things are going well and things are not going so well. I say hallelujah and bless his name in the good times and in the bad times. Sing something else. I don't know what. Yeah, God is coming back. I just think it's a short this church. Y'all just shout the devil right on out the back door. Hey, 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 hey. Trying to mess us up. Just press the worship button. I just started shouting <laughs> under our feet. Thank God for that. Amen. Hallelujah. And through it all, through the good, the bad, and the ugly. Uh huh. Oh, yes. You said, Brother Freddie, have you ever experienced it? Any ugly. Uh, guess what? I'm glad I didn't have to navigate through that by myself. I'm yeah, glad that God was holding my hand the whole time. Yeah, but through it all, through it all, God was faithful. And He'll be faithful to you through it all. I know we sing this song around here a lot. Right. But you understand this morning. You don't know. You've never walked in my shoes and I've never walked in yours. You never felt the pain that I've had to feel. I've not felt your pain. Trust me, he's an almighty God through it. 
church where this that kind of thing didn't happen to I, I'm all about things being done decently and in order, but it is perfectly in order when God shows up. Oh, 
have already come to the altars, but maybe uh, you were waiting for this. And it's 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 normal around right here to have a few altar calls. If you're going through something and you need the help of God, you need God's hand in your situation. Why don't you ask? The Bible said you have not because you asked not. Jesus said, Matthew chapter number 7, it is the Father's good pleasure to give them the kingdom. Won't you ask? They get ready to sing a song. Here we come. Come on. God, I need your help. God, I need blessing in this area of my life. Come on. God, I need deliverance in this area. That I've never faced before That's why I'm calling on you
Your Bible, y'all. Y'all can just stay right there. We uh, I ain't gonna read it anymore. Uh, and uh, Luke, I believe it is chapter nineteen. Luke nineteen. Uh, we read a very familiar portion of scripture. Luke nineteen. In verses 36 and following. The Bible said, And as he went, they spread their clothes in the way. Go ahead and help me with that. And when he was come nigh, even now at the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice, for all the mighty works that he had seen, saying, Blessed be the king that cometh in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees from among the, uh, the multitude said unto him, Master, rebuke thy disciples. And he answered and said unto them, I tell you uh, that if these should hold their peace, the stones would immediately cry out. Why don't y'all lay them right here and just face them out a little bit. What, thank you, Joe, what would the rocks cry? If the rocks were to cry out that day, what would they have said? 
I'm going to make this as brief as I can because uh, we've been here a while and some of y'all are ready to go. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to listen to the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Over in the book, you can just leave it right there. You don't have to uh, go anywhere. Over in the book of Exodus, chapter number 17, uh, Moses has brought the children of Israel uh, out into the wilderness, out into the desert. Uh, they are thirsty, and they uh, they come to the place where they wanted to go back to Egypt because there was at least some water there, and they had food there. But here they are out in the wilderness, out in the desert, uh, and they're about to thirst to death. They feel like, uh, and they say they they begin to cry out uh, uh, for something to drink. And God speaks to Moses, says Moses, "There's a rock in front of you." He said, I want you to take your staff and strike that rock. And when you do, water is going to come out. The Bible said in uh, Exodus 17, verse 6, I will stand before thee uh, there upon the rock in Oreb. Thou shalt smite the rock. There shall come water out of it yeah. and the, that the people may drink. And Moses did so. I believe uh, if you ask that first rock uh, what you have to say, uh, I believe that first rock would have to say something like this. Uh, no matter how dry, there is refreshment. Uh, I'm glad uh, you might find yourself uh, in a desert. Uh, you might find yourself dry. Uh, you might find yourself uh, away from anybody else. Uh, but I'm glad uh, God left us some reminders uh, down through the way. Uh, and that old rock... Uh, would say it like this. I don't care how dry you are. There's refreshment available for the child of God. Aren't you thankful for that? I'm taking notes. Years ago, I can't help but tell this story. Jason, you might remember this a little bit. We were heading back from the coast because Christians go to the coast. Heathens go to the beach. <laughs> <laughs> we were heading back and I'll never forget we, they'd always go down Highway 9 where you get all them speeding tickets <laughs> Cleo and McBee and Dylan and all that uh -huh, y'all know all that <laughs> and uh, we turned Highway 9 and made a turn right there and it opened up on a more of a highway section we were heading back and they pulled over on the side of the road ahead of us. Me and John, I don't, I don't know that I, if I was able to drive then or if I was riding, but I remember what happened. They pulled over and uh, they, they told us the whole time, we're going to stop on the way back and we're going to go by this spring. And it's the, it's the coolest water. It's so refreshing. And man, I was licking my lips, wanting to get some of that. And they pulled over on the side of the road, and I'll never forget Mama Bradshaw was her name. Uh, she she had um, diabetes and all this. She had to get all these shots every morning. She shook. She was well, well. Oh, she told me about the first time she had ever seen a car. She thought uh, it had great big eyeballs on it. You remember? Yeah, uh, Marty's uh, ain't Marty's with us here. Uh, uh, she she told me about that. I'll never forget her frail little hand. Uh, Aunt Nye Marty, she stuck out that back window, and uh, Lee, they called him Sugar Babe, he came around to get her little old cup, and he's going to go fill it up for her. And she is looking forward to getting some of that water. And he started taking off with that little cup, and it got to the edge of the woods. A big old sign plastered. The spring is contaminated. Don't drink the water. And before I, where, John, I, I, I hadn't necessarily had a thirst except that I was wanting to drink what was coming there. But I'll never forget watching as he come back with his head bowed low and handed that jug back to her. Said, we can't drink it no more. It ain't good no more. I'm glad, hallelujah, though the wells of this world 
may get contaminated. Though the wills of this world, you might not be able to drink from them. I'm glad to tell you, child of God, there's still a will that's springing up into everlasting life. And no matter how dry you get, there's refreshment available for the child of God. That second one said this over in uh, the book of Samuel, I believe it's 17. David had heard about this giant that was defying the, uh, the armies of God. And he said, who is this Philistine? I'll make him as any other enemy I've been up against. And he, he told Saul, he said, I killed a lion, and I killed a bear, and he ain't no match for my God. And so he went down there, and Goliath did what Goliath did, and David tried to take the army armor, that David tried to take the weapons, David tried to take everything that they offered him. He said, I can't go with these. I've not proven them. Yeah. And then he went over to the, to the little brook. The Bible said he reached down and picked up five smooth stones. Mm -hmm. Why did he pick up five, John? Because Goliath had four brothers. That's why. He picked them up. He walked over there. He said, you come to me with a shield and a spear. I come to you in the name of the Lord. And he took that old sling and, sling and he whirled it around a few times and let it go. The Bible said it hit him right in the head. He fell down. He went over there, cut his head off. Preacher, what are you saying? No matter how defeated you feel, there's a song that says there is revival that's available. The enemy, the army, armies of Israel wanted to give up. They wanted to give in. It's all they could do. But there was a rock to remind them, no matter how low you get, I can bring you back up again. Somebody help me now. And uh, I've been here trying to pastor since 2004. We've seen some ups, we've seen some downs. And uh, 2017 was a difficult year for me, personally, ministry-wise. Uh, my father passed in March 2017. We uh, had some key folk involved in ministry that had stepped away for a while. Our offerings were low. My morale was low. Even though I tried to pick it up, God somehow, because of the way he is, God brought us through that. I think, Brother Sean, part of the reason was 2017, I could look back to 2004. See, because in 2004, when I walked in here, we had about 10 or 15. And we could literally fit them all on these two roads. As everybody was here. We was trying our best, we was doing our best, but man, we was broken. And God started working. God started blessing. People started getting saved. People started getting excited. People started getting revived. Saints that were hurting started healing. And God was working and God was moving. And Brother Earl, in 2017, I needed to remind myself that the God that got us here is the God that will get us, get us through. Yeah. God that has been faithful up to now, he'll be faithful tomorrow too. Yeah. And, uh, Y'all all know, two things started turning around a little bit. God started helping. God started blessing. And man, I, we were poised. 
I was poised. I thought 2020, the year of vision. <laughs> I bet we didn't see that one coming, did we? <laughs> and 2020 hit, and Lord, I thought, ain't no way. How are we going to do this? I, I, I thought I thought we was getting a running legs. I thought we was just now getting somewhere where we can go somewhere. God said, I needed to bring you down so I can show you what I can do. Yeah. And out in the parking lot with KFC chicken buckets, God showed himself faithful. God showed himself real. In fact, there's some of you sitting in this room right now that started coming out in the parking lot long before you ever sat on a padded pew and saw any stained glass or chandeliers. You sat down in the parking lot honking the horn, blowing the horn, flashing the lights, and we was just going to church all by ourselves. Why? Because God was trying to tell me no matter how defeated you get, there is revival that's available. John chapter 11. This thing's getting heavier. <laughs> John chapter 11. Jake, you better take a hold of this. John chapter 11. Lazarus was sick. Lazarus died. Jesus shows up. They said, if you just got here on time, everything would be all right. He said, where had you laid him? Show me the place. He goes and said, take away the stone that you put on him. They said, that was not. There we go. Yeah, that was. I'm good now. No matter how gay your situation looks, Surely he stinketh. Where have you laid him? It's too late. If you'd have got here on time, everything would be all right. Where have you laid him? He goes to the uh, front of that grave and yells out, Lazarus, come forth. The Bible said that he came forth, that that was dead came walking out. Bound head, he said, loose him and let him go. Now, I want to ask you this question. What is it that's dead? Hey, big hold me and hold that, man. What is it that seems like it's too dead for too long? You don't think it could ever live again? I believe them rocks, they'd have a different story to tell. They'd have a different song to sing. The old song said it like this, I ain't gonna let no rock cry out in my place. I don't know about you, but he been too good to me for far too long. Ain't no rock gonna do my praising for me. Ain't no rock Go worship in my place. Ain't no rock gonna be where I'm supposed to be. Ain't no rock gonna say what I'm supposed to say. Ain't no rock gonna sing what I'm supposed to sing. I'm here to tell you, child of God, God's been too good to you to sit there and be quiet. God's been too good to you to sit there and think, I just got, I got the lowly rubs. You don't understand, preacher. I know it might be all right for you, but things are bad for me. You don't know what I'm going through. Yeah, but I know what you're going to, amen. I know that God is able to bring you out. I want you to stand with me. And uh, let's, let's just, right there where you're at, let's worship and pray. Right where we at, here's what I want you to do. I want you to pray out loud. I mean, you gotta yell, yell, but it's all right if you do. But I want you to pray out loud. I want you
want you to thank God for what he's done. Thank God for how good he's been. Here we go. I believe. God, thank you for your blessings in my life. Thank you. Lord, you've been better to me than I ever deserved. And for that, I want to tell you I love you and I thank you. Now, Lord, help us. Touch us. God, do it in our heart. Do it in our life. Lord God, what only you can do. Show yourself real. Show yourself kind. Oh, God. We love you. And we bless you. And we believe you. In the name that is above everything. In the name of to whom demons tremble and demons bow down. For the word said that every knee in heaven, in earth, and underneath the earth shall bow. Every tongue confess that you are Christ the Lord. God, we thank you for the help of Lift your wings and gently, dear Lord, out to the Father. Thank God and we know that. While you yeah. remain standing, we're going to sing one more song. Y'all come help me. Yeah. 
this little business called the Smile Boutique. <laughs> if you like necklaces like this, a little, have you got a bracelet on? Bracelets and right there she goes. And bracelets and rings, stuff like that. And kids and grandkids like that kind of stuff. Um, that'd be great for them. I'm not telling you that to, to make a sales pitch. Uh, we, we taught her that when you make money, y'all be faithful to give it. Yeah. And uh, and so she made a little bit of money. And we told her now, uh, you need to tie and get one of them envelopes. And uh, she got an envelope on Wednesday. I believe it was. Was it Wednesday? On Wednesday, yeah. On Wednesday, she got an envelope and she put $5 in there. seem like a whole lot to you, but for a little kid, it's not yeah. 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 And uh, she put it in there and gave it to me to give, put the offering on Wednesday night. Well, we, uh, Thursday, she, she told me that I had promised her sometimes, you know, we get hoodwinked. And uh, I promised her that I was going to take her to the, uh, what is it? Sweet Frog. Uh -huh. <laughs> And I, I said, well, uh -huh. I, I said, now, now she, cause she said, I'll buy it. And I'll buy it. And so we went over there to the sweet frog. And she loaded her uh, thing up with everything she wanted, got up there to pay, and told them my note, my telephone number. And they said, and, she, and you know, I was expecting how much it was going to be. She was rifling through a little pocketbook there and said, sir. This one's free. And she walked away with a blessing from God in her hand. She told him, she told me about that time. She said, Well, it might be because I gave five dollars instead of four because I only owed four. <laughs>